Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be painting the Grave Digger. That's from Village Attacks. This is another miniature that Alex has very kindly not only sent me, but he's commissioned this piece and said we could film it for you guys. So you guys get a tutorial and he gets a sweet painted miniature by Watch It Paint It. If you're interested in that sort of thing, do check out Patreon and come and chat with us, that kind of thing. I'm just showing you the miniature here. It does come unassembled to begin with. So I've glued it to a temporary base. Alex is going to rebase this when it's at. Uh, in, in his possession and then those other parts. I've just attached to those crocodile sticks, uh, crocodile sticks, crocodile clips on bamboo sticks. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can pick up some of those. I'm um, actually, they were suggested by a couple of YouTube subscribers and they're really good. I use them a lot, especially when miniatures are un -pre assembled like this one. I'm going to start with a bone white by Vallejo and I'm not going to prime this miniature. It's a resin miniature. It's highly, highly detailed. So I'm going to use that game color range which works as both the base coat and the primer all in one, just reducing the number of layers I need to put of paint on this and, and potentially obscure some detail. Leather brown for his pants, and that was bone white for his shirt. I'm going to use khaki, khaki. I've always said khaki, khaki. I don't even know which I used to say now, and I don't know which it is. Uh, but one of those, that color, that light pale brown, that's going to be for the coffin. This is, uh, I noticed one of my friends was... I often send a picture of the, the piece I'm working on and call this the coffin guy. And, you know, he's more coffin than guy. And I like that name. I don't know why he's a grave digger. He should just be the coffin guy. Charred brown, really, really dark brown. All of these so far have been that game color range, just letting me use it as a primer base coat. Really, really thin, thin layers, not going to obscure any detail. Also going to do the handle of his shovel. Then I am going to use Necromancer Cloaks. This isn't a game color base primer, but I found, and I've used it a few times in the past on resin miniatures, this sticks fine. There's no issue whatsoever. None of it's ever come off, but I wouldn't recommend it. Obviously, if you weren't painting in a super detailed miniature, I would suggest priming anyway, uh, using a spray can. But as I've mentioned many, many times before, these paints aren't coming off resin miniatures at least. So for this example, I'll show you this. If you're painting this game, you've probably got the plastic versions anyway, so they've not got quite as much detail, so it's not a non-issue for you guys. I'm also going to use Necromancer Cloak to paint those gloves and his, his hat, his head on the stick, so that's the other piece, but I'm going to do that in Necromancer Cloak. It kind of might look a bit black in the artwork, black, very dark grey, but I always prefer Necromancer Cloak. It gives you more range to highlight up. Survivor skin, I'm going to paint just that tiny, tiny bit of skin that's showing that's just really really his face and that's it just a splash on on his on his face next up is white primer by Vallejo again the all this game color range is a primer just sorry I'm banging on about that bit but I get asked that a few times it is on their site it is in the documentation that this should work as a primer so that's for his hair he's got really white hair so I'm painting it white and then I'm going to use some shades next I'm going to start with light tone and I'm going to be doing that bone white that I did for his whole shirt and I'm just going to be lightly toning this. This is Army of Painters light tone. It's a little bit yellow, a little bit brown. It's it's just, it's, it is what it says. I, I wanted his cloak to go a little bit darker, just but only a smidge, not super dark. I didn't want a really, really high contrast. I'm also going to be doing that on the leather brown pants that he's wearing. And then I'm going to use the deep shader. This is a really, really dark brown. And that's for that khaki or khaki coffin. I'm going to really, really bring out the, the contrast in that. I want those lines between each each plank of wood on the coffin to really, really, really stand out. I want a really high contrast here, make it look quite realistic and just darken it down a little bit as per the artwork, trying to make it match. Then I'm applying a lot of it behind his sort of head and in the back. So that would be really dark. It's going to be covered by his face once I glue this miniature completely together. Then I'm going to use Survivor Shader. That's a black wash. And as I mentioned in the artwork, his clothes... The, the Necromancer Cloak stuff might be a little bit black, so I'm going to paint Necromancer Cloak and that charred brown, and I'm going to give that a wash in black, darken it down a little bit, and just emphasizing the shadowy recesses areas with this, and I basically have to use a black wash to make that sort of contrast enough. Then I'm going to move on to highlighting, and I'm going to go back with all the base colors again. So we're just going to start with that bone white, and very, very carefully going to paint all of the raised parts of his cloak. He's got his cloak or his shirt, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> cloak or shirt, you decide, but he's got lots of folds in it. So I've got this paint watered down quite heavily, probably probably about 50-50, enough to make it very translucent, but not enough to make it run everywhere. And I'm just going to paint lightly over each of his folds and build that up off camera in a few layers and just, uh, you just got to judge it by eye. 
We're going to use leather brown, and we're just going to basically dot. He's got sort of this padded leather pants on, and I'm going to put a, a dot of highlight on each, I don't know what you'd call it, like the diamond bit of each uh, pad, essentially, and that's going to make that look quite realistic. Then I'm going to use Necromancer Cloak, and I'm going to go around. He's got sort of edging or piping on his shirt, and I'm going to highlight that around around the bottom of it and around his collar. And then for the coffin, I'm just going to try a very accurate dry brush using khaki. Uh, just very, very carefully trying to make sure I don't... should have done this first, guys. If you're watching this tutorial, do the dry brushing first, because then you can correct any bits you catch that you didn't mean to. Um, I've done this afterwards because I was just going to paint on the lines, but I decided a quick light dry brush is just going to be quicker and more efficient. Charred brown, just highlighting up the edges of his spade and any any of the little tools at the back of his uh, coffin behind his behind his head that you're probably not going to see when it attaches his head. Then I just wanted to show you Filthy Necromancer, as named on this channel, as voted for on Patreon. We're going to use that. That is a mix of basically Necromancer cloak, 50% and Filthy suit, 50%. It's just a light dark grey. And I'm going to edge highlight his boots uh, a little bit on his gloves, especially around his, his knuckles. He's got some what would you call it, like belts across his boots, highlighting those on the edges and the point. And yeah, here we are. We're doing the, the gloves, as I mentioned. So if it's his fingers, his knuckles, and then his hat, I'm going to do around the rim of his hat and the top of his hat as well. After that, we will go on to the metallics. And for this video, we're going to use the Dark Star Molten Metals. You probably saw me unbox them. You've probably seen me mention them a few times since. I am thoroughly enjoying this metallic range. It's very, very impressive. Almost too impressive. They almost have too many colors for me. And at some point, I will do a review. I'll let you all know. Uh, you, spoilers, I, I love the these paints. They're very, very good. Uh, but I think in the review, I will be able to... <laughs> ooh, having a dance. Be able to... More, oh, oh. Do, do, do. Just... Don't tell Alex. Let's just sweep this under the rug. There's no way he's ever going to find out about this. I will fix it off camera and he'll be none the wiser. Yeah, be careful when you pull these incredibly fragile resin miniatures off of crocodile clips. Uh, but I will fix it and it's seamless in a minute. So blue steel, another dark molten metal. And as I was mentioning in the review, not, you'll just hear that I like them. But I'll also try and mention... There's 28 colors, and if you can't buy the whole range, I'll let you know which are my absolute favorites. So that'll be coming. Let us know in the comments below if you are interested in that review, and I might step it up a notch and actually get it done. Obviously, we're always making videos, and fitting it all in is difficult. So this is bright steel. I'm just edge highlighting all of those blue steel places. And then I'm going to use old silver. So I'm going for a whole bunch of dark star paints here. I've got my magnifying glasses that get in the way, and I'm very, very carefully old silvering the, the crosses on, on his coffin and various other little bits. But depending on what you're using, just you can, you can cut out lots and lots of different things. Use a dark silver, use a light silver, you'll get by. But it ain't going to look as sweet as this, and you aren't going to have the pleasure of using these dark, dark star molten metallics, which are sweet molten metals. And that's it. That's how he is going to look. As I mentioned, he is going to replace the base. He's got a plan for these miniatures he's commissioned, but... It's going to look a lot better if I, even if on a temporary base, if I bother just to paint it black. As I mentioned many, many times, if you want a quick, easy win, just paint the base black. It's going to really draw your attention back to the miniature, but at the same time, make it look actually finished. So here is completely finished. Apologies, I didn't keep super solid track of the time. There was quite a lot of painting off camera, so it would have been, it'd have been a lie anyway, but probably about three hours, probably some of my longest work, but... Hopefully that attention to detail, you know, choosing which metallic paints to use very carefully, very carefully edge highlighting, bothering to get my magnifying glass out and uh, being able to see it all as, as carefully as I could. And it gives a nice result. Hopefully Alex is happy with this. Thank you ever so much, Alex, for commissioning this work and sending in the models. And I'm sure as everybody else will thank you. Thanks for letting us make a video so people have got a little tutorial how to see I painted it and if they would like to achieve similar looks which bits they'd like to copy along with so thank you all for watching and i will um you know see you again next week